Hello, and welcome to a game development tutorial using Corona SDK. This is Daniel Williams, and in this tutorial, we will cover how to create an endless scrolling background. For this tutorial, I'm using the default phone size of 320 by 480 in Corona SDK. If you use this code, you may need to adjust the speeds and sizes of the code to make it fit for your game. You will also need the image backgroundclouds.png, and this is a free download that can be found on my website at gamebuildingtools.com. I will also include a link to this graphic in the notes below this video. Now that we're set up, go ahead and open up main.luit in your favorite text editor, and we'll start coding. The first thing that we will do is hide the status bar on iOS devices. To do this, we'll type in display.setStatusBar and pass in the parameter of display.hiddenStatusBar. Next, we will set up a few variables to make it easier to code the rest of our game. So we'll type in local underscore w equals display.contentWidth to capture the width of the screen. We'll type in local underscore h equals display dot content height to capture the height of the screen. And finally, we'll create scroll speed and set this to two. This variable controls the speed of the clouds within our game. If you want the clouds to go faster, increase the number to four or six or eight. And if you want to go faster, just make the number smaller. If we hit save, and we look at our simulator, we now have the status bar hidden in our simulator, and we also have three variables set up. The next thing that we will do is add in three graphics of the clouds into our simulator. So I already have the code typed up to avoid making you watch me type up every single line here, and I'm gonna paste them into main.lua. You can find this code in the notes below, but let's go and walk through what's happening here. On lines 15 and 16, we have local bg1 equals display.newImageRect. Display.newImageRect tells Corona to add an image to our screen, and in our case, we are adding the cloud image. We are setting the width to 320 and the height to 480. We are also centering the background graphic on the center of the screen, and we are also putting it on the center of the screen going across the Y axis. The second background here is the same process. However, we have named the second background BG2. We have centered the background across the X axis, and then we have placed the second background directly below the first background. And we do that by setting BG2.Y equals BG1.Y plus 480. So BG1, the first background, will take up the full screen of the simulator. And then the second background, sits below here, if you can see the mouse cursor, it will sit below the first background graphic. And then finally, we have a third background graphic, which follows the same steps, but we have added a third background graphic below the second background graphic. Now if we hit save, in our simulator, we will see the first background with the clouds on the simulator. Now we have to create a function called move that will control the movement of the clouds within our game. So hit enter a few times after line 24 and type local function move with a parameter of events. And we'll close up the function with the word end. And then within our function, we actually want to move our background graphics. And we do this by adding the scroll speed to the Y position of our background graphics. And again, I've already typed this code up, so I'm going to paste it in here, and I'll cover it here in just a few seconds. So these three lines of code will move the background graphics down the simulator screen according to the scroll speed. The first line will move the first background graphic, the second line will move the second background graphic, and the third line will move the third background graphic. If we hit save, our simulator will relaunch, but nothing's happening yet. That's because there's nothing calling the function move. So let's go ahead and add a event listener. So we'll type in runtime, 
add event listener and we'll pass in the parameters of enter frame in double quotes and follow that with a comma and put the word move. So what this line does, it tells Corona to run the function move of every frame within our game. Now if we hit save, you will see the background graphic move down the simulator. However, what happens is once the background graphic leaves the screen, it just keeps getting pushed down. So what we need to do next, we need to have a way to reset the position of our background graphic to go to the top of the screen so it creates the endless scrolling effect. So let's go back to our move function, hit enter a few times after the third background gets moved, and we'll type a if then statement. We'll type if bg1.y plus bg1.content width is greater than 1040, then we want to move the background graphic to 0, comma, negative 960. So this if then statement will listen to the y position of the background graphic and when it is greater than 1040 it will move the background graphic to the top of the screen at the y position of negative 960. And we need to repeat this if then statement for the second and third background graphics. So let's change BG1 to 2. And we'll do this one more time to change BG1 to BG3. Now if we hit save, you will see that we have created a endless scrolling view of the background clouds and they will just keep running and running and running. And for your game, if you want to make this scroll go a little bit faster, you can change the variable scroll speed from 2 to something like 8. And if you set to 8, the backgrounds will move faster. So that's it to creating an endless scroll with Chrono SDK. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.